Have you ever been to rural Japan? Here's the village where I lived for a year, and villages like these are haunted by something called mukade. They look like this, and they are deadly poisonous, almost impossible to kill, and I once found one in my bed. So you'll understand that I was rather hesitant to play Centipede Recharged when it was announced to be coming free on the Epic Game Store. But I was relieved to discover, and I don't know if you will be relieved, but I was, that Centipede Recharged is not a horror game specially made to send me into a coma. It is actually a remake of an Atari game that turned 40 years old in 2021. Yes, they had video games in the Stone Age. It's just that you actually had to go out to an arcade in a mall and put a coin into a machine for each round, which was intended to last a few minutes to squeeze more coins out of your little hands. Now, you might want me to explain what I mean by Atari, or arcade, or shopping mall, or, since this is 2022, or going out. If you need any of those things explained, then this game might not be for you. Because this is very much like the original game. It's really an homage to a 40-year-old game that is a simple, fast-paced, endless runner arcade shooter. What you see is what you get. There is no explore exploration or any type of different screens except what you see here. There's no levels per se, no beating the game, and very few difficulty changes as the game progresses. And while the graphics are a bit more refined and closer to the action than the original game, this is still very, very retro. So if you don't like that, then this is probably not for you either. The entire game is about moving your spaceship, I think, think it's a spaceship, I'm going to assume, just around shooting centipedes. That's what you do. You can move back and forth and up and down to a certain section of the screen. And one annoying thing for me was that the imprecise movements, or I should say unpredictable inertia of the movement, often made me feel like I was sliding into the enemy after I had already taken my finger off the button. Also, this is a one-hit kill game. There is no way around it except in co-op where your friend does have a chance to get a power-up that will revive you. The number of enemies is also pretty limited. You have the centipedes that move towards the bottom of the screen in a mindless mukade-like determination to destroy you, spiders that drop power-ups, scorpions that drop poison mushrooms that cause the centipedes to race straight down like multi-legged torpedoes, and fleas or cockroaches that drop from the top of the screen in an attempt to land on your head while you're distracted by centipedes. The major change to the standard play of centipede recharged compared to the original is that the spiders drop power-ups instead of being the most stressful part of the game and zipping around the screen like a coked up super ball of death. I kind of miss that element, but the power-ups are interesting, ranging from rapid fire, spread shot, or even a ghost that scares all the little creatures and makes them retreat off the screen. The other major change is the challenge mode that allows you to test your skills in 30 specific situations varying from timed challenges to precise shooting to logic puzzles. And these challenges bring more content and might help you engage in the game more if you like the standard play but find it a bit repetitive and believe me, it is definitely repetitive. Perhaps the most fun this game offers is in local co-op mode where you and a friend can team up and play zone defense and try to survive as long as possible or perhaps you will steal a power up once too often until your friend decides to box you in with a bunch of hungry centipedes, aka my worst nightmare. So now we come to the most interesting part, should you play Play it, but first you should know that this game is usually eight or nine dollars, but it will be free to claim from the Epic Game Store starting on March 3rd, 2022. It will be free for a week, and if you claim it during that time, add it to your library, then you keep it forever. And that's what we do on this channel. We play and review every game that is free from the Epic Game Store. So as you build up that backlog of hundreds of games, 
and if you've been following this channel from the beginning, you should have at least 200 games in your backlog. You don't have to play all of them. You know which ones are going to be the best value for your limited gaming time. So subscribe now to make sure that you are never bored again. There is actually a second game that's free this week from the Epic Game Store, Black Widow Recharged, and my co-host Michal has reviewed that. Make sure you check it out as well. So I've often said in this channel that I don't quite understand nostalgia and that why would you want your game to be pixelated if it could be photorealistic? We all have incredible games to play now. Let's not look back at these quite limited games from the past. This was actually the first time that I felt a little bit of nostalgia because this is a game that I played when I was very young and actually I remember going to an arcade and playing this and wanting to get farther and farther and wanting to to get onto that high score board that at the time was like the only reason you played video games was to get the high score. But beyond that, we have to put this in the context of 2022, all of the amazing games that we have to play. And the fact is there is not a lot of depth to this game. There are a lot of things missing that I wish they had added. Uh, some roguelite elements would have been nice so that each time you die, you bring something with you so you can get a little bit farther the next time. Perhaps uh, different types of enemies. I mean, I believe there's only four types of enemies in the entire game. They could have mixed it up and made it more interesting as you get farther into the game. And they could have played around with the, the playable area, you know, sometimes making you stuck at the very bottom of the screen, sometimes letting you um, kind of roam around the entire screen. There's a number of things that could have really shooken up the formula. It's clear that it was a conscious choice to stay very close to the original game. This is nostalgia through and through. So if you remember this game from your childhood, you might be ready to put some significant hours into this remake. It might really hook you. But for everyone else, I, I'm actually going to offer a very rare yes but ruling on this. While it's free, yes, you should claim it, and yes, why not install its 400 megabytes and play it for 20 to 30 minutes, even if it's just to see what video games used to be like in the beginning. It's enjoyable, it's engaging. In the beginning, it just gets very repetitive and doesn't really change the farther you get into it. So don't expect it to be deeper than it is, and I think most of you won't feel the need to play it past the 20 or 30 minute stroll down video game history. So tell me in the comments if this triggered your nostalgia settings, and while you're at it, tell me how you would deal with a Mukade in your bed. Catch you next time.